Hello and a very warm welcome to all of our listeners. Today I have the honor of inviting Dr. Praveen Thomas, who's a very special guest over here. He's a senior neurology consultant from uh, Narayana Health City, and he has done his training in neurology from Amrita Institute, and then he has gone to do a postgraduate diploma and fellowships in complex headaches from University College of London and University of Birmingham, respectively. Since then, he has founded and chaired the World Headache Society and he has joined our institute to create a unit which will hopefully give comprehensive uh, headache evaluation and management and we are very proud to say that we will be the only center in the country that can offer such a service under his guidance. So welcome sir. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Amrit. We are glad to have you here. Pleasure having you. So today we are going to be discussing what is his specialty, which is headaches, which is something that I think every one of us have faced at some or the other point in our life and it's a recurrent issue. It's a very common and a very recurrent issue. So let's start by telling our viewers what is a headache. Yeah, so a headache is any kind of sort of pain or a discomfort in any part of the head and whenever we say head, we always assume something which is on the top of the head. Right. But actually, when you think about the head of an animal or something, you know, if you chop off, you know, you, it's basically from the shoulder above, isn't it? Including Everything, the neck. Yes, absolutely. So any discomfort in the neck or on the face, hmm. that's all part of the head. Right. So headache, when we say it could include all of these pains which affect any part of the face or the, uh, uh, the neck, mm -hmm. or, you know, including the ears, eyes, nose, right. face. Yeah. Right. So, I think there's a common thing in India, I don't know if you've heard this, but majority of the people when they say that I have a headache, they don't say I have a headache, they say Mujhe migraine here. Correct. They will say I have migraine. So, can you tell us what exactly is migraine and how is it different from the other types of headaches? So, there is a lot of, uh, as you said, you know, when someone says that they have a migraine hmm. or they have a headache, or they have a sinus headache, yes, or they say yes, sinus, or they have an uh, sort of uh, eye problem, so they put up specs and the headache gone. Right. All this is uh, more or less uh, worldwide, uh, you know, um, understanding and cultural. The different ways in which people understand these things is totally based on how they perceive the information that's available to them, what has been told to them by their doctors, by their family physicians, and whatever they have gathered from the internet, etc., mm -hmm. will form what the opinions are usually on what they may be having. So mm -hmm. therefore it's important if someone starts saying whatever whatever they start with, it's okay. But going to the details of the problem is important. So for example, if someone says they have migraine, mm -hmm. uh, we will be probably trying to see whether they actually have migraine or not. Correct. So migraine is uh, it's a very complex neurological disease and the commonest neurological disease right. which manifests with pain and many other problems. Pain is just one aspect of migraine. And migraine is not just a disease, but migraine is also a symptom. So which means that uh, when we usually talk about migraine, we talk about a specific disease and that, that disease is a genetic disease. Right. So you are born with certain uh, genes and when I say you, it includes say 90, 99% of the world's population. Right. Uh, so statistically speaking, everyone would have had some headache in the last five years or even more than that. Uh, so it's it's um, it's just the frequency and the intensity which varies. Right. So what people generally say that you know the normal headaches. So someone who didn't sleep properly, having a groggy ha heaviness in the right. head, or someone had a hangover headache, or someone didn't you know eat food properly and had a headache. All these are minor forms of migraines. And sometimes even there are patients who have uh, migraine equivalents. For example, vertigo, dizziness, and sometimes right. there are presentations where. Uh, they have migraine only, for example, ladies who just have it just on the one or two days before the periods. Right. And there are also there are people who, who get it during times of stress. So many things were just taken for granted. They're all various spectrum of migraine. Uh, so that is one of the features. And yeah. so um, when we say the other causes of migraine, it's important to know, yeah. apart from the disease migraine, there is also symptoms of many diseases which can present exactly like a migraine. So what is exactly a migraine? So the migraine can present with pain anywhere on the head. So usually uh, patients will say, I've got pain in, around the eyes or on one side of the one head side, yes. or on the back of the head sometimes. Mm. Sometimes, you know, you may have patients um, who will present with pain on, exclusively on the face 
Yeah. So that's why they always mistake it for because this is the area of the sinuses. So they think that there's a sinusitis going sinus on. Issue. And yeah. sometimes the eye, so people will think it's an eye problem. Sometimes even the ear. In fact, I just came seeing a patient who just had a ear pain. And sometimes the, it need not be even a pain. It can be what's called as a discomfort, numbness, tingling sensations. Uh, all these. So that's why it's not just a pain necessarily. It has to be any abnormal sensation. Some people will say tingling. Some people say the water is uh, you know, dripping down and uh, that is one aspect of it. So apart from the genetic migraine, which we all get as a polygenic, when you say genetic, people generally think it's because of parents having migraines, not necessarily. No, it can be anywhere in the family. Multiple it? factors coming together. Multiple genetic, factors coming right. together. It's more like one of these other lifestyle diseases, uh, chronic uh, diseases, such what we call as the um, uh, the vascular, uh, you know, right, disease, like obesity, hypertension, uh, obviously hypertension, uh, diabetes, hypertension, diabetes, yeah. right? Which Those are all multifactorial genetic uh, polygenic, causes. Correct. Polygenic. polygenic. Uh, so here, actually, sir, you mentioned something which I felt was very interesting. Many people may not recognize it as a headache. Many people may not recognize that they have to. It's not severe enough for them to go and seek help, but Correct. it's a continuous nagging problem. True. And if it is fixed then there will definitely be a gross reduction in the morbidity yes. if it's correctly diagnosed. That's right. right. Yep. And you actually covered my next question. I was about to ask you what are the causes of migraine. Yep. So what I will say is I, I think our viewers would want to know what are the other types of headache. Sure. So sure. we migraine can present in any way, but what are the other things? Like you said something about refractive errors. Yeah. So that. True. So if you want to, if you if you split all the different uh, types of headaches, there are more than three hundred types right. of headaches right but i'm not talking about the causes causes actually run into thousands that's true but then the types of headache itself runs into hundreds mm. so what we are actually trying to look at is whether it fits a particular uh, a group of uh, symptoms and what we call as signs which the doctor will actually look for and uh, see whether you fit into that profile of uh, headache right. disorder so migraine being so common most people generally by default tend to have migraines but then again as i said the causes of the migraine itself is a big list. We could at least find around 45 causes oh. which present just like a migraine. Okay. So many times we think that it can, because migraine is a very common disorder. Apart from the, the disability that's caused by it, we may think that migraine can be, you know, it doesn't kill anybody. But migraines can have complications. For example, migraines can be associated with strokes. Migraines can be associated with epilepsy. Okay. So there is that aspect of migraine also which is disabling and also sometimes causing uh, uh, what we call as a severe uh, illness in the form of a stroke. Right. So that is one aspect of migraine. 42 conditions when I say, you know, there are so many conditions in the brain. For example, you have a tumor, you may have a bleed, you may have many diseases in the brain which can manifest with a pure migraine symptom. What are the migraine headaches? Apart from headaches, you may have a bit of nausea, sensitivity or to yeah. light, sound, smells, movement, because the whole brain is very sensitive to all external stimulus. Right. That's about migraines. Or aura that you might get prior to it. About and maybe a few percent of people will have auras which are uh, depending on which part of the brain is affected. Okay. So commonly you say visual. So sometimes there's blurring of vision, which is why people may think that it's because of an eye problem. Sometimes you can have vestibular orders, for example, ringing in the ears or reduced hearing in the ears or something like a, a spinning sensations. Right. People may think it's an inner ear imbalance and issues, but it's commonly associated with these kind of migraines right. and behavioral problems. Sometimes there could be, you know, sort of uh, anxiety, depression, difficulty focusing, problems with memory, mood. All these are linked because these are all the areas of the brain which are affected with migraines. Okay. Other type of headaches you may have, for example, neuralgia form headaches, which are just localized areas of small areas of mm. small pains. You may have pains which are brought about by problems in the in the eyes, eye disorders, which cause you know kind of pains, ear disorders causing pains, nose disorders causing mouth disorders. You can have pain when you swallow. Again, neuralgic form headaches, neuralgic headaches. There are headaches which cause a lot of red eyes and watering from the eyes called trigeminal autonomic cephalalgias. Right. There are headaches which are caused by um, uh, the, uh, you know, a lot of what's called as a muscular tension. There, is a, there are headaches which can be uh, kind of classified as called a short lasting headaches. There are headaches which just come on the face like a sudden jolt an electric hmm. shock. So multiple such types of headaches. Headaches are there. will be there. Yeah. So, uh, so in these causes that you have mentioned, is stress an important cause for headache? Yeah, anything which is um, 
outside the baseline of normalcy what we say that when we have a when we have an you know in our daily life we have uh, situations where we are more stressed than usual yeah. so that is uh, you know the, we are basically we are uh, designed to be in a state of what is called as homeostasis or stability okay. so anything which causes a, a flux from that baseline mm. can trigger a headache which includes stress right. so anything unusual let's say more than usual can actually trigger a migraine process. So stress per se doesn't cause any pain. Stress is just an abstract uh, concept that you're having a little bit of anxiety, which is the mm. perception of the feeling. But stress itself is not a physical entity. Okay. But along with that emotion, what usually, usually it's a thought which follows an emotion. Along with an emotion then drives a lot of changes inside at a molecular right. level, which then causes a triggers a cascade of inter, you know, events which can cause a disease, or it can even trigger a migraine. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, so from what we have covered till now, headache is such a common symptom and it can, so many different conditions can present with it. Some of them are, like you said, some of them may not kill you. Some of them actually might be an emergency. So how does how does somebody recognize that, okay, this is a danger signal. Yeah. This is a headache that I should definitely get medical help for. Sure. So, so yeah, any any headache which comes for the first time in your life, you're not sure what it is. Right. Any headache which has changed its character. For example, uh, I've been having headaches for the last 20 years, but now there's something different about this headache. Hmm. So there's a change in character. That character may be frequency, intensity, or the you know the location, whatever. But when there's a change in character, you want to know whether it's the same disease process or something else going on. Right. So for example, someone who's been diagnosed to have migraine, who may be having migraine for 40 years. It doesn't mean that after 40 years, 41st year, something else can't happen no. because it's such a common disorder, isn't Absolutely. it? So these are the some of the markers or rather the some of the fact, you know, the things that where you need to have a certainty and therefore you want to seek an opinion. Mm. And the other things are, of course, so there are certain other pointers, for example, headache in pregnancy, headache in old age, anyone over the age of 45, 50 years who start, start having a headache, or even otherwise headaches which have become worse in the you know, older age group. And uh, you can have headaches associated with fever or weight loss, you know, or other, other joint pains or, you know, reduced immunity. You know, okay. in certain diabetes patients or those who are having immunocompromised conditions, they're all uh, important to be recognized to identify what are the causes which can be rapidly sort of uh, yeah, even worsen, sometimes worsen or even worse. fatal. Yeah. And uh, the other one is a very sudden onset of headache, which reaches its maximum intensity in about one to five minutes. Usual headaches, if you're very, if you talk about other headaches, you know, it just starts slowly and then builds up over a few hours. It's not so problematic as much as these sudden onset of headaches. Right. And sudden onset of headaches can be what is called as thunderclap, but just comes like a, a bolt out of the blue, suddenly like a whack. Mm. And that reaches a peak in about one one uh, minute or so. Mm. And then severe headache and, th and that comes multiple times. Right. That can be a you know, kind of symptom of any, many underlying conditions like venous sinus thrombosis, which is actually clots mm -hmm. inside the veins of the head. Right. And you can have a rupture of what is called as an aneurysm, which is an outpouching of an artery causing bleeding inside the brain mm -hmm. or a stroke which can be an ischemic stroke when there's reduced blood circulation to the brain yes. or a bleeding or there could be what's called as a pituitary apoplexy which is sudden bleeding into the pituitary gland right. there could be a, yeah there's a host of actually disorders which are also called as uh, uh, these uh, what's called as um, emergency headaches thunderclap headaches uh, there is one another condition called uh, spontaneous intracranial hypotension idiopathic intracranial hypertension and even medication overuse these are also uh, you know noted to have these sudden severe worsenings if you take a lot of painkillers for instance Absolutely. that can cause some of these headaches um, okay. yeah so i think sir has explained this very well to our listeners we should take all headaches seriously we should get it evaluated at least once but especially if your headache is sudden if it is very severe if it has changed the way it used to be over the last few years and it is coming again and again then definitely you should immediately go consult a doctor so uh, now as i mentioned earlier when i was introducing you it's that we have a hospital we have a unit where at our hospital we are fully ready to handle any type of headache true, right true. so uh, we are able to offer this service to our uh, patients which is something which is unique which true. is not available anywhere else in the country so what are these different treatment modalities that we offer here 
Yeah, so what we, you know, generally what's called in, um, I think some IT, IT terms, corporate terms, end-to-end -end solutions. Right, or, All under one roof. You know, mm -hmm. basically, you know, you may have a lot of hospitals which are uh, looking at headaches and a lot of departments which are looking at headaches. For example, headache is not just seen in, in one particular department, say neurology and neurosurgery. Most of them, headaches are dealt with by general practitioners, pediatricians, yes. emergency physicians, critical care physicians, ENT doctors, ophthalmologists, um, uh, you know, uh, other so psychiatrists, many. psychologists, yes. physiotherapists. Yes. Alternative medical practitioners, they all see headaches. So what is, uh, what is a comprehensive headache center is those headaches which are uh, sort of sometimes when there's a diagnostic dilemma, sometimes when there are refractory to common treatments, they get referred to a center which is able to go through, a, you know, kind of have a revisit into what exactly is going on, um, find the right cause and then treat it. And for treating, which means that there is this whole team which is also surrounding uh, this particular unit where... Uh, where all their opinions will be taken into consideration such that uh, most of the time these headaches are managed by more than one person and therefore everything can be available in one center. So that sort of a comprehensive center is what we are uh, offering. That is, that's excellent. In fact, I'm very happy to say that SIR is actually looking into expanding this and hopefully we will be taking uh, fellowships as well that is the that is the aim right yeah we are that starting we the will, fellowship this year as well yeah that's that's excellent congratulations sir thank you so uh, one take home message we would like for our uh, for our viewers what are the lifestyle changes one can do if they have uh, this problem of headaches yeah so um, i can say lifestyle changes for migraine because it's a specific um, um, g g disease called migraine, right. not the symptom of migraine, which I said earlier can be because of many causes. Hmm. Because headache being such a, it's a symptom, it all depends on what underlying cause. For example, there are some people who have headaches when they travel in an airplane or someone who goes scuba diving or hmm. someone goes to high altitude. So as I said, there are more than 350 varieties. So depending on what their condition is, we may have to give different sets of advice. But generally speaking, for a condition such as migraine, where there is a tendency for headaches to be triggered by these rapid fluxes in lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is to practice what we call as the dinacharya or a practice of discipline where everyone has got the sort of not too much of erratics, uh, you know, changes in their sleep and eating habits. So eating regularly uh, in the sense, regularly in the sense, um, you know, for example, uh, not more than let's say one hour difference between your regularity in eating for example right. going and empty stomach or uh, you know skipping a meal not a good idea or let's say um, if it's exercise you know having it on a daily basis rather than once in a while right. or even even if it's a little thing even if it's a few minutes that sort of a regular routine is what the migraine brain is, yeah. yeah so when it comes to meditation when it comes to exercise proper eating proper sleep they're all important to ensure to prevent have that sort of regularity and anything which disrupts any of these regular routines Tends can to. trigger a migraine so that is one thing and any general well-being exercises such as good nutrition having good exercise and uh, doing meditation every day and doing yoga every day which is found to be beneficial in prevention of uh, headaches such as migraines is is a good way to go about it of course when we say yoga uh, when we say yoga, it means yoga asanas and also pranayams. And some yoga asanas may not be a great idea for migraines. So therefore, it has to be very specific. So rather right. than giving a blanket statement, I would rather say that get your advice from someone who, who is, is uh, trained, trained right? to give you that advice. Uh, and what about sleep habits, sir? Sleep habits, too less sleep or too much of sleep can trigger a migraine. Too much of sleep. Too much of sleep. For example, there's something called weekend migraines which come out you know, weekdays, people sleep for four or five hours during very stressful jobs. And at the weekend, they sleep for a very long time. So during the weekdays, they don't get a headache, even during the stressful times. Weekends, counterintuitively, despite the fact that they're completely relaxed, they're sleeping mm -hmm. for 10 or 12 hours, that day they get the migraines. So it's all right. about breaking the routine, you see, because the brain right. is used to that less sleep. Now suddenly you get too much of sleep. That's also bad. So it's all about... So it's all about balance, balance. and following that same schedule routine. every day. Because the brain all likes right. to have routine. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. That was that was actually very educative for me as well, because like from my background as well. No so I hope Pleasure. the viewers had a good time and it was very informative so we we'll sign off now thank, thank you, you very much thank you dr amrita thank, thank you. you sir thanks